Americans are demanding more pedestrian friendly and walkable communities. But with that said, big cities aren't for everyone. It's about time we showcased a great small city. I visited Frederick, Maryland recently and was super impressed by the density, architecture, and infrastructure. We had a great time strolling down the streets, checking out the historical landmarks, and chatting with all the friendly locals. Frederick has a little bit of everything. Mountains for hiking and camping, lakes and rivers for kayaking, breweries and wineries aplenty. There's always an event to find, tons of good dining. I could go on and on. Frederick is conveniently located within an hour of Baltimore and Washington, D.C., with a rich history dating back to the colonial period, it has many well-preserved historical sites and landmarks, including the National Museum of Civil War Medicine. Surrounded by scenic countryside and has many parks and outdoor recreation areas, including Cunningham Falls State Park. Transit provides bus service throughout the city and surrounding areas. The bus system operates six days a week and offers several different routes, including commuter routes to nearby cities like Hagerstown and Germantown. Let's jump right into the best neighborhoods and how they provide excellent walkability, bikeability, and access to transit. Starting off in downtown Frederick. The downtown area in Frederick is a bustling hub of activity. Take a walk down Market Street and you'll never run out of things to do. With live music, art galleries, and theater productions happening regularly at the Weinberg Center of Arts, downtown is super walkable. It makes it very easy to pick up groceries at the Common Market, meet friends for lunch at Sumitra Thai Cuisine, or just take a leisurely stroll through the city's charming streets. The Fredericktown Historic District encompasses a significant portion of downtown Frederick and includes many historic buildings. Among them, the Frederick County Courthouse, which was built in 1862. It stands out as an impressive example of neoclassical architecture. Another notable structure in the district is the City Hall, which was also built in 1862. The Mark train station is also located nearby, making it an easy commute to other areas of Maryland or Washington, D.C. Imagine yourself living here in a three bedroom, two and a half bath home built in 1920, only a few blocks from all the action. Only 325,000. I also found a one bedroom apartment on the very same street for only 1,100 bucks. Sure beats rent in D.C. The next neighborhood we're gonna check out is Baker Park. You can walk west down 2nd Street from downtown. You'll bump right into the Baker Park neighborhood, which boasts a 44 acre park with walking trails, sports fields, playgrounds, and a lake. We spent most of our time here with our two year old son. The lake allows fishing and boating, and there are often community events and concerts held in the park, fostering a strong sense of community engagement and entertainment. Route 10, also known as the Green Line, passes near Baker Park and connects you to other key areas of the city. It's home to many historic homes and buildings, including Victorian style houses and early 20th century bungalows. Located at the very west end of Baker Park, Schiffer Stad Architectural Museum. It was built in 1758 and it is recognized as one of the oldest and finest examples of German colonial architecture in the US. Baker Park is almost all residential. I was searching for homes and found a, a great two bedroom to rent in the uh, Parkview Apartments for only $17.50. Split that two ways and you got a heck of a deal. From Baker Park, you can walk south down College Avenue and arrive in Carrollton. It's perfectly located just south of downtown Frederick, making it easy to access all the amenities of the city center. Mount Olivet Cemetery is located in Carrollton, which is home to the Francis Scott Key Monument and marks the burial site of the famous poet and the author of the United States National Anthem. Pretty sweet. It is a tribute to Key's historical significance and his ties to Frederick. Speaking of ties to Frederick, the Frederick Keys are based in Frederick, Maryland, with home games played in nearby Harry Grove Stadium. And the Keys were actually the single-A affiliate for the Baltimore Orioles from 1989 to 2020. This neighborhood is another great walkable area. You can walk to get groceries at Way's Market and hit up restaurants like Analia's Cafe for Greek food. The Blue Line and the Red Line pass through the area, providing connections to other parts of the city. And you can find super cute homes for sale like this four bed, two bath built in 1948 for 378,000. Other walkable areas would include Frederick Heights. Anytime a neighborhood is called Heights, then you know it's a nice place to live. What about biking in Frederick? It's a fairly bike friendly city with a few bike lanes, mainly shared bike lanes, not protected, but it's easy to get around on two wheels. With it being a small town, the back roads and neighborhood roads will have very little car traffic. The city's park and trail system, including the CNO Canal Towpath and Frederick City Watershed Trails, offer miles of scenic routes for recreational riders. 
The city also hosts several annual bike events, including the Tour de Frederick and Bike to Work Day. So they certainly promote biking as a healthy and sustainable mode of transportation. So if you're ever in the DMV area, do yourself a big favor and check out Frederick, Maryland. Thanks to subscriber PJ Flynn for putting it on my radar. What other small town hidden gems are out there? Let me know in the comments.